Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sanctity of Life Sunday, or Life Sunday, a day when we focus on life. And our text is from the Gospel uh, lesson from Luke chapter 10. Most of you know the story. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. And as good Christians, when we hear this story, we tend to tell people to reiterate the uh, emphasis of this story that we need to be like the Good Samaritan. We need to support those in need. We need to help those who are beaten and helpless and left for dead. Unfortunately, that comes off kind of arrogant. It comes off of arrogant because it makes us sound like I'm like the Good Samaritan and I am the Good Samaritan and I do these good things. And we feel like we need to start life on the road where the, Samaritan wa- or the Good Samaritan came down. I'm here to tell you this morning that you do not start on the road. You start in the ditch. As good Christian Lutherans, we understand the proper perspective of who we are. And that we are people of the ditch. Now we know here in Minnesota, we live in a climate that has snow. And so when the first snow comes, and we get quite a bit of it, it covers everything, including the ditches. And it looks so nice and pristine and white until those who don't understand snow wind up in the ditch, and then it looks ugly again. But as the thaw comes, whenever the thaw comes, that snow will melt, and it unveils or uh, lets you see what's underneath. And so you see the dirt, and you see the grime. You see the pieces of body or car bodies that have been broken in crashes. You see the rotting carcasses of the animals that were covered up. The dirt and the filth, the stagnant water. The ditch is not so pretty anymore. And if we are truly honest about ourselves and if we melt away the facade of our Christian self, we find underneath all of that, all of the underneath that righteousness that we have, we find the very same thing. We find dirty, sinful human beings. We find that we have a rotting, disgusting, sinful nature at the very core of who we are. That's how we're born into this world. It's a fact. And so we need to understand that that's where we start is in the ditch because when we really understand our depravity, where we are and the fact that we cannot help ourselves, we are at the very bottom of life, it is then, it is only then that we can begin to realize a finite understanding of the infinite compassion of the guy that came walking down the road in the story in Luke. That guy who didn't cross over to the other side. And so we need to understand that we were in the ditch, and when Jesus came along, when we heard the gospel message, when our hearts were convicted and our lives were changed, and we stopped refusing that gift, Jesus wades into the ditch of our life, right up as deep as he needs to go. He grabs us with his mighty strong arm, as he did the people of Israel, and he drags us up and puts us on the road. That's how we get onto the road. Jesus himself came into this world for us, as you know, and he suffered and he died on that cross and he rose again after he died and made it possible for us to have forgiveness of sins and redemption. And so Jesus heals our wounds with his wounds. He stops our bleeding with his blood. He lifts us up, heals us, and makes us whole again. Jesus Christ. That's how we get onto the road. It is not because we clamor and we struggle and we get a a rope or a chain or whatever. It's because Christ comes down into the ditch and pulls us up out of our muck and our mire to where we need to be. It all takes place in your faith, that gift that God gives you through the working of the Holy Spirit. For most, it's through the waters of holy baptism. And so in that faith, we are connected to his suffering. We are connected to his death. And we are connected to his resurrection. What a wonderful thought that is. Jesus Christ, who didn't have to, 
That's what's really interesting. As Jesus comes along the road in our life and finds us in the ditch, he doesn't just stand at the edge of the ditch and yell down, oh, you can come on up. I'll cheer you on. No, just like he does everything else that he does for us, he goes beyond and gives us that wow moment, that jaw-dropping, I didn't expect this moment, when he wades down into the ditch for us who are undeserving and pulls us out. There was a lady that uh, wrote a letter to Lutherans for Life. That's an organization, a pan-Lutheran organization that supports uh, pro-life. Uh, she wrote a letter. She had had an abortion. Somewhere in the process, she had heard the gospel message and been comforted with the words of hope that Christ gives us. But in part of her letter, she wrote a statement, I'm kind of paraphrasing, the fact that she never realized that Jesus Christ was willing to come down into her mucky, miry world and save her. She never realized who Jesus Christ really was until someone took the time to explain it to her now she has a whole different perspective on what hope is. She understands that hope. And so now we walk this road of life, and we are focused on the path that God has given us, but we're also supposed to be watching the ditches. We're supposed to watch the ditches, and you don't get a choice. When you find somebody in a ditch, you can't say, oh, I won't help them, because that's... Uh, that's a touchy issue. That's controversial. I won't touch that. Or you can't say, I won't touch that situation because it's political. And therefore, people won't like me and I'll lose my tax exempt status. I'm going to stay away from that. You don't get a choice. The love of Christ compels you to go down into the ditch and to help them out. Compels you. Doesn't entice you. Doesn't ask you. Compels you to go into that ditch. And so when we come across the embryo in the Petri dish, in that ditch of life, and it's going to be destroyed, we are compelled to step up and to stand for that embryo that cannot stand for itself and cannot speak for itself. Why? Because Jesus Christ was an embryo. That's how he came into the world. And so therefore, he places value on every embryo that ever exists because he was an embryo. And we don't step up to protect this embryo because it's the right thing to do. We don't step up because it's the moral thing to do. We step up because it is the Christ thing to do. It is the Christ thing to do. And so it is with the unborn child that is going to be aborted. We don't get an option to stand back. We are called to defend that unborn child. Why? Because Jesus Christ was an unborn child. An unborn child that had hands that were pierced for our iniquities. And so therefore, he gives life to all unborn children. Gives value to all unborn children. And we take a stand and say, no, you can't do that. And when we come across the post-abortive woman or the man in the ditch who has suffered the loss of an abortion and now is suffering with that, we again don't have the option to walk away. We are compelled to do the Christ thing, and to wade into that ditch and to haul them out and to tell them of the hope, proclaim the hope and the saving grace that comes from God alone. God bless you. And it doesn't just stop with the unborn. God bless you. It also continues on to those who are suffering from terminal illness, who are going to die from cancer or whatever else is in their lives. We can't walk by and ignore that. We are compelled by the love of Christ to do the Christ thing and to step in and to support their life because it has meaning. Why? Because Christ gives meaning and value to suffering. He suffered for you and I. He gives value to that. Through suffering and in suffering, He brings value. And so we step up to the plate for the Christ thing and do that. We walk this road because we are called not only to be like Christ, better yet, we are called to be Christ. When we walk the road, people are to see, to hear, and experience Christ in what we do. And Christ does not walk by and he does not ignore. He steps into the fray of whatever it is and he does what needs to be done. We are called to do the Christ thing. We are people of the ditch. 
And so as you walk this road, you are citizens of the place that you are, whether it's Minnesota or Washington or India or wherever. And so you are called to pray for your president, your senators, your representatives, your congressmen, your local officials, whoever it is that is in government. You are called to pray for them, that they would seek the Lord's guidance, that they would seek peace in all that they do, and that they would be seek, or seek to be led to do the right thing, the Christ thing. More importantly, as you walk this road, you are citizens of heaven. You are citizens of heaven. And you are called to do the Christ thing. Because Jesus Christ has done it for you. When you were in the ditch, floundering, dying of sin, the disgusting person you are, he walked into that ditch and he pulled you out. And he expects us to do the very same thing. You have to remember to start in the ditch. Because when we don't start in the ditch, we do. We become arrogant. We forget about all those things, and we treat people as if they already know these things, and they don't because they've spent their life in the ditch, and no one has bothered to walk into the ditch and tell them what they need to hear. You are people of the ditch. So if you've never had any time in the ditch physically out on the road, take some time. Go out and walk a few minutes in the ditch. It's not a pleasant stroll you'll find all kinds of nasty and disgusting things. And in this time of year, if you're not wearing proper footwear, your feet will become wet and cold and you will freeze. Please don't stay too long. But there are people floundering in their sin, have not heard the gospel message, and Jesus calls to us, people of the ditch, and says, see my people, help my people. Now, just like someone who's drowning, floundering in the water, and we try to save them, Sometimes they hurt themselves and all the floundering, or maybe they don't want to be saved. And so you need to understand that as you reach, pe reach out to people in the ditch, not all of them are going to be receptive. And you can't make them come out onto the road. You can offer them the compassion and the love and the healing and the joy and the peace of Christ. But if they tell you no, if they refuse your help, you pray for them, and you go on. We cannot save everyone. We don't save anybody realistically. It's God that does it. But you are his instruments. And he calls you to remember where you come from. To remember where you are headed. And who it is that walked into the ditch for you. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, loved you so much. He pulled you out of the ditch. And now you have the opportunity to reach other people. Leave here today as people of the ditch and look for those other people who still need to come out of the ditch. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.